What's up guys? Um, today, back working on the car, and as you can see, we got a new air cleaner set up on the motor, and we're going to be creating something to hide that. It's an 8x12, a uh, 14 inch circle wouldn't fit, so I got an oval one. Um, it's a 4 inch element. I just ordered this off Speedway, it was like 30 bucks. Um, I vinyl wrapped it black because it was originally chrome, and I hate chrome. Uh, this is the element I got off eBay. It comes with a little two inch paper one. KNs is like twice the price, so I just got an eBay one. But anyway, what we're going to be doing today is creating a scoop to hide this, a hood scoop. And we're going to be using vinyl to do that. Or not vinyl, sorry. We're going to be using fiberglass. So here's basically the parameters of the hood scoop based on some measurements and my ideas. So what I did was I measured from this front edge up so from the, the base of the front edge up we have to be about six and a half inches to clear this hood scoop mind you i have a half inch hood spacer in when this is down this will be down here about a quarter inch or so so you have to account for that in case the hood spacer ever comes out make sure the scoop will still work so six and a half inches it'll be up and that way there's ample room to clear then Back here, I measured from here up, and this is gonna drop even more if the hood spacer is ever out. So I add a little bit more, came up around four and a half inches, and then I added a little bit of back sweep. So if I were to cut the hood scoop out of a square, that's what it would look like. But I'm gonna round this front edge off in a fashion that I like, then cut this out and see how it looks. So here's the basic idea, the shape. Um, I kind of tried to match the front and back angles. Overall, I think it looks pretty decent. It's a pretty damn big scoop, honestly. So, what I'm gonna do with this now is transfer it to wood. And also, I want this side, it is kind of leaning in a little bit already. I want it to be at a slight angle inward. And what I'm doing is creating these to trace to wood. Then I'm gonna make a mold to make the fiberglass, you know, shape into it. So we got both of the pieces cut and if you notice what I was doing with the angle that the bandsaw was set to 15 degrees the table saw blade was set to 15 degrees this hood scoop is made to have slightly angled inside so if we take a look here on the table saw that's about the angle it'll have it's about um, 75 degrees inside angle so it's 15 degrees from 90. Um, they're not perfect, but it's a mold, so they don't have to be. This isn't gonna be the final product. And I'm gonna show you guys how we're gonna bring them together in a second. The biggest problem with them being cut at an angle like this, the top and bottom are both cut. They're gonna be really, really hard to sand. You're gonna have to like clamp them in a certain way and sand them. Even then, you're probably still gonna take away from the original angle. So I'm pretty much just cutting them as close as possible. And then we're gonna work some magic with making like a little jig kinda. So let me explain this to you guys. This is basically the exact hole that's in the hood cut to use as part of the mold itself. So essentially these, this inner angle is actually cut on the bandsaw to match these. Now these will just staple in like that front and back, like with the sides, then that gives me a structure to hold it all together and a structure to make the top fit on perfect. I'm very impressed with this bandsaw. It's the first time I've used it since we got it. 
And I love the bandsaw. We used to use that tiny one in the corner. This thing is so killer and the angled deck or like you know, the cutting surface, sick as shit. Here is the scoop. As you can see, the top isn't done yet. Um, these are stapled and glued, and um, the top is gonna tie them together, of course, but we have to get to that point. What I have to do first is get the file on, which is like a, it's actually the same thing that is used on the side of that motorhome. It's like a fiberglass film that's very flexible, but it's smooth and a super, it's a super duper smooth and glossy surface. So, we have to line this, cut it to shape. Then we have to line this eighth inch piece with it as well, just contact cement, and stretch that piece over, and staple and glue the edges. And this little piece right here is so the front has something to butt into. So we'll see how that works. Here's how it's gonna look on the car. Clearly the hood has a slight arch here, and this is straight, mostly because I wanted that bottom edge to be square on both sides. And cutting it on the jig or the bandsaw with that slight angle would have been a little bit tricky because it would have to still have this 15 degree bevel. So basically the middle of the scoop might just have a slight gap. Shouldn't have been able to tell because it's just going to be black so it shouldn't hide it. scoop as it came out. A little bit down here to work with. Fill this with some putty and sand it. Same with these edges, nothing too much. Gotta shape the back edge over here needs a little bit of putty but overall looks pretty good. We just gotta cut all this out now to leave some room for the flange she bolted in. What's up guys? So we did indeed get the hood scoop done. Unfortunately, I didn't film too much of the final parts because we were working on it and um, really rushing to get it done. I was It was late at night. Just wanted to get it on the car and fit it. So we didn't film too much, but I'll show you where we're at and what we need. Here it is on the car. Um, these bottom edges, if you notice, aren't smooth. They kind of broke away from the mold. So we're going to have to fill those with body filler and sand it. A couple of the edges are like that, not quite as bad. The back's a little bit thinner, but it doesn't matter. Pretty squared up. It needs like finished sanding and it needs to be painted, clearly. But as you can see, it says, please excuse our appearance during construction because right now it's not even close to being done. So we just put it on for the event today. Good idea what it looks like. Pretty big, if you look inside. I mean, it's, it's pretty big and in your face, but I love it. Leave some room as well in case I ever switch intake manifolds to go up or go down. Um, and also if I lower the hood back down, there's room for that. That's why it's so tall. There's a little tour of the tow rig real quick. So here is my trusty tow rig. Sorry the fans are on. It's actually the only vehicle I own with AC, ironically enough. The backstory of this van is I kind of got it um, pretty much for free. I offered to buy it off my uncle, but he was like, you know what, just take it. You need a little bit of work like tires, a serpentine belt, and um, a pulley and a battery. So all in all, pretty cheap it has it's literally like for the year it's so luxury this seat is fully power seat i think that's fucking impressive for this year it has all this like stupid wood trim he actually like customized some of this stuff himself he went all through finding these vans and junkyards and taking all the parts that he wanted and putting them into this it has these cool little lights up here you can turn on lights up the whole back real cool at night Get your back area open this door up in here there's actually this little spring there's an oven and this opens up and this becomes a table so you can cook on the propane oven it has a little burner on top too it's actually really cool plate holders he built this to go camping just kind of repurposed it it's got so much storage that's all stuff he added he put in like this whole piece this is like from a house i think it looks so cool in here but it's real useful. This is actually set up like a little water pump, so you can use this as like a little sink. Um, this is another cabinet from like a house. These are my ramps that are in here when I'm driving. The couch is here. Um, more storage back there. Vents for the rear AC unit, because it actually has two condensers. Then I put in a flat screen. Uh, I actually put my Xbox in here when I, when I, if I, like if I went autocrossing one day, I put my Xbox in here, plugged it in, turn on the inverter, and you can play Xbox. 
right from the thing on the TV. You just got, you know, um, I keep my helmet and stuff over here, usually on the floor. This hat fell off, it's usually hanging up on my hook. Um, just some paper towels. You know, they're just there when I'm driving. Another radio, that really works well. This is actually set up to be a cooler. It's got a little bit of insulation and a drain tube out the bottom of the van. Uh, let's see what else we got. Let's go look up. This is where I keep my tools. I got a bag with some tools in it. Um, some of the tools are loose. I got a spare fire extinguisher, need, or distilled water. Got some oil over here. My funnel, this stuff's kind of messy. I just threw it in just now. Um, so the ramps aren't usually here. This needs to go back in the toolkit. So it's a little bit messy, but my tools are back here. The best part about this van is I cannot wait to go to a two-day event because of this. Hit this button right here. And this thing turns into a bed. I'm not going to do it right now because of the ramps, but it turns into a bed. On to the final and last part of the tow rig. Personally, one of my favorite parts is the trailer. Um, I just put this toolbox on here yesterday. Um, I just keep my blocks for my ramps in there, my jacks in there. Um, spare straps here's the car it um, fits in the trailer pretty good I actually should have made a video on this because I had so much fun building this but I wasn't making videos at the time I made this tie rack by myself it cost no dollars it was all free metal that we had uh, recycled from something else so I made that myself um, as you can see whole day tire so plenty for the day I got four new Achilles up there for tonight two half burnt Ironmans on the end they're just in case and then these, I mean, I have them, but I don't really use them because they're a little dry rotted. I might take them out street drifting or something. But that's the trailer. Um, really no frills. There's no other lights on it but the tail lights. And I need to make real ramps because I just use my wooden ones right now. But I mean, I think, personally, I love this setup. It works damn good. The van's slow, but it was budget friendly. And having the trailer set up like this is actually super convenient. You can still haul other stuff. And um, I just, I freaking love it. So. That's the whole tow rig right there. Uh, so that's gonna be it for this video, guys. The next video, I'll probably make a little bit of um, footage from English Town drifting. Uh, you know, when I get there, make some footage and I'll uh, post it for you guys.